G'day, you good motherfuckers. Usually I start these videos by yelling and screaming like an absolute fool. In today's video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought, why don't we go on a journey together? And the way we're going to go on this journey is with meditation. Please, can you all shut your eyes right fucking now? Take a deep breath. <gasps> Imagine a world where everyone can live freely, live in happiness, grow to a humongous fucking size, have flabs spilling over your hips and hiding your genitals forevermore, developing stretch marks in your ankles that then turn into stress fractures from your extreme girth. Imagine a world where eating as much as you can and growing to a size where beach towels become tea towels. Imagine that beautiful body. That is beauty. That is modern day beauty right there. Body positivity is beautiful and fat phobia is evil. And if you are fat, you're healthy. And if you're skinny, you're part of the problem. Being a fat fuck is healthy, all right? That's what I'm saying. You know those 120 year old Japanese ladies? Mm. You know the ones that live for a long time? The reason they live for so long is because every morning they deep throat a stick of butter and open your eyes. Hang on, I'll shut them again. I'm on tour, my ticket link is below. Brand new show, come and see me live and open your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, I have fantastic news for you. Lizzo has put on weight. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? Congrats, babe! You've absolutely done nothing! In this video, we're gonna look at the science behind Lizzo and the fat doctor, if you remember her, makes a return. The lady that basically told the world, who was an actual doctor, that obesity doesn't lead to any type of disease or death. Let's look at the science of all of this. We are science people, we're science based, we're fact based. Facts are more important than feelings, all that shit. Let's have a look. Let's talk to the most trusted healthcare professional in the entire world. Thatfatdoctor.uk, Asha Lame. And according to her Twitter, she's actually over the last 12 months become non-binary. And the only reason I know that is because it's in a Twitter fucking bio and she covered her profile picture with a fucking flag. Wish I had a fucking flag, feel like I'm missing out. Now, the last year of the fat doctor's life. How can I sum it up? Maybe this tweet will get it. All right. <clears throat> Total number of deaths from the Rona, 5.41 million. From obesity, zero. <laughs> How could you say that? Okay. Let's break down the defense of the fatties for some reason. First of all, you'll notice she doesn't spell the word obesity. She doesn't even use the word. She senses it. Imagine being so weak minded. You can't even read a word. This fucking, this is from a doctor, this tweet. When a person dies of insert cause here and they aren't fat, we don't attribute it to their height eye color or postcode or number of sexual partners. But if they are fat, we assume that their weight caused the condition that eventually led to their death. Why? Because it probably did. As a doctor, you should probably know that being obese not only increases inflammation throughout the body, which a lot of people believe is the cause of a lot of different diseases. It blocks arteries, it does all that type of shit. It can lead to diabetes, it can lead to heart disease, it can lead to circulation issues, it can lead to a lot of different things. So yeah, being overweight certainly doesn't help you live a longer life. That's why in all those diseases, all those deaths, the vast majority of the people are overweight. Has it ever been possible to prove that being fat causes any fatal conditions? Well, if you're fat and you fall on someone, that may be fatal. Nope, do not confuse causation with association. No doctor or pathologist can claim that a person died because they are fat. And that is not a legitimate cause of death. It's speculation and prejudice. If you're a doctor or a healthcare professional, let me know down below if this lady is fucking insane. But if you don't wanna look at the comments, here's my take. Um, I guess she's right, because if you are a man in the jungle and you get shot in the cock by a bazooka, right, and you die, no one can prove that you weren't gonna die 
at that exact moment anyway. And it just so happens that the bazooka shot your cock off. It just so happens. It's got nothing to do with your death. It is prejudiced. So, enough with that bullshit propaganda. The number of deaths worldwide that we can safely assume were caused by obesity are zero. How the fuck did she get her medical license? I swear I'm gonna to get to Lizzo because it's important that we talk about Lizzo's carry-on. But first, we need to understand the facts about obesity and thankfully the fatdoctor.uk has a frequently asked question section of they them's website. Is weight something we can control? Almost everyone believes the lie that body weight is simply a case of calories in versus calories out. The lie, okay? That is nonsense. The first law of thermodynamics only applies to a closed system. And since our bodies are anything but, we need to stop buying into this idea. Will a calorie deficit result in weight loss initially? Almost certainly. Does this translate to a long-term weight loss? Almost certainly not. Now this is an argument from the fat doctor she says all the fucking time, okay? And it's bullshit. They them says, <laughs> that basically you cannot stick to a diet. And if you start a diet long term, you'll get off it. Not if you fucking stay on it, then you will stay at a calorie deficit and you will continue to lose weight. That's why diets aren't so much the answer. It's more of a lifestyle change rather than a crash diet. Does being fat reduce your life expectancy? The short answer is no. Okay, good, but it does reduce the chances of you ever getting a root. And 18 year old me fucking knew that all too well. Does being fat cause diabetes? No, nobody knows what causes diabetes. Probably the coronavirus. Does losing weight improve your long-term health? The short answer is no. Very simple, I like this. Is there any alternative to dieting? Number one, body acceptance. That's a great way to lose weight. Uh, number two, intuitive eating. I feel like a pizza. Number three, joyful <laughs> movement. I <laughs> So if you're overweight, just be a happy fat fuck dancing around a pizza and you will be healthy again. Now that we know the facts, let's check on our old pal Lizzo and see what that big old bastard's up to. I gained weight to look TF good T. Whatever the fuck that means, I guess it's hard to type with fat fingers. Lizzo is a big girl, okay? That's the important thing here. She is probably a foot shorter than me and an extra 50 kilos on me. She's 150 kilos and for a woman, that is a fuck ton. And while I don't think that fat people should be hidden in the cupboard, they wouldn't fit for starters, I don't think they should be hidden away. I don't think they should be shamed or any of that type of shit or bullied. I just think they shouldn't be championed. Because we all have things that we don't like about our bodies. Some people are overweight, some people are losing their hair. I don't know any of those people. All these different problems, right? They've got a third toe, what a third toe? Fuck, I'm, I'm, I've got the rona at the moment when I'm filming this. I've got no fucking idea what I'm talking about. I've got a fever, I'm dying. And they're the things that we should be body positive about. Things that people can't change. But we shouldn't champion things that are dangerous like being obese. That's why I make these videos, because I know what it's like to be fat. I know it's hard and I know it sucks and I know you don't see light at the end of the tunnel because it's blocked with cheesecake. You don't see light at the end of the tunnel because it's fucking hard, but it is doable. I believe in you, you tubby shit. Lizzo has always spread body positive messages and has been a vocal proponent of loving yourself at any side. Unfortunately, this has always made her a target of fat phobic trolls. G'day. And though she usually masterfully handles these hateful people, there's been a few times where she's talked back about how people unleash hatred onto black women, especially us big black girls. Is she referring to when people attacked her because she went on a diet? Isn't it funny when the same woke people who love and defend you and go in to support you, attack you when you go the other way. It seems to me the fat woke always tend to eat their own, no pun intended. So Lizzo gained weight, so what? We all gain weight, we fluctuate, we go up, we go down, we go everywhere. You eat a big old pizza, you're gonna go up three fucking kilos. But what Lizzo is doing here is exactly what Taylor Swift does. Okay, Lizzo is successful because she always talks about body positivity and she's a big fat lady, etc., etc. Taylor Swift does the same thing. How? She always talks about heartbreak and love and I'll never be in love and I'll always be the bridesmaid. And people can relate to that. Lizzo is the same because there's so many people who are unhappy with the way that they look and they see her as an example of someone who's fucking huge getting on with their life and, and, and living a successful life. And while that is nice, it is nice to see someone who looks like you 
doing well in the world, it is not a healthy thing to do. In the same vein that Eugenia Cooney, and she's just started a Twitch channel. This young lady is very mentally ill. She's extremely skinny and suffering from anorexia. Now, if you put her up on YouTube, which she does all the time, and said to people, this is what healthy looks like, people would be outraged. And it's the same. Being severely anorexic and severely obese is both as bad as each other. And you can say I'm a piece of shit or whatever, but the facts do not lie in this situation, all right? Particularly in a world where we're terrified of a certain illness that's traveling around. The number one comorbidity, which means the things that cause fucking death in the under 65s is obesity. Don't take my word for it. Here's 22 studies suggesting the exact same. Basically, the more fat tissue in your body, the bigger the cytokine storm, and it fucks up your whole fucking system and it shuts down. But these people are adults. Do whatever you want. Okay, Lizzo, the fat doctor, you're promoting obesity. What about when it comes to kids? A recent study of more than 400 COVID admissions in children from Canada, Iran, and Costa Rica showed obesity was associated with severe COVID-19, particularly among those over 12 years old. Obesity was the only background health condition that increased the risk threefold of severe COVID-19 in this age group. If we're worried about our children, then don't promote being fat. Teaching people, teaching young people that healthy at every size is a real thing is dangerous. And being healthy is hard. Eating a healthy diet is hard. Training every day is hard, all right? I train six days a week and I run three days a week. That is hard. It's almost like another fucking job but I do it because I want to get the most out of my body and my life. And I don't think that many other people out there can say that they don't want that. So don't accept yourself for who you are right now. Accept the person that you can be if you put the effort in. Ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe that if you are a fat person, and I'm talking to you right now, you can do it. Cut your calories, train your heart out, and well, not your heart, look after your heart. Train your fucking guts out, that'll do, and be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East, mid-extincts, toodaloo au revoir, bye bye.